All right, so hey, welcome. Uh, it's week four, right? Oh. Everyone survived. <laughs> We've made it this far. We've made it this far. There's no, no turning back. Well, we're a fifth of the way through. Fifteen weeks. Three down. Yeah, three down, 12 to go. Okay, so let's dive into the shell. A um, couple other things I want to mention. Um, so I will not be here, well, I will be here next week. Thursday will be my last lecture. Um, well, not my last lecture, but I'll lecture again on Thursday. And then the following week, I'm trying to get either um, Greg Guccio or um, Tim Chester to come in. As I, as I was just mentioning, I am not NABCEP certified, but your final exam in this course is taking the NABCEP Certificate of Knowledge exam. And uh, Tim Chester took it and passed it. Greg Guccio has taken it and passed it. So um, I'd like to get uh, those two guys um, in here in front of you. So let's just let's just take a look at the calendar for a sec so everybody knows what's going on for the next few weeks. Log into the shell while we're waiting on that. Todd, you said just a couple questions on the, was it exam two? Yeah. Okay. Dive into that too. It's a little, uh, I think the internet's a little slower over here on this <laughs> side of campus than uh, over in my office. Taking its sweet time here. Well, anyway, it is week four. Um, I'll, I will lecture for week five. I will not lecture for week six. We'll just we'll leave it at that for now, and then we'll, we'll go from there. I don't know what's going on with my poor little Moodle shell. Poor little Outlook. Guys, while that's loading up, I, I wanted to share one other thing with you here. So um, for projects this year, is anybody interested in actually writing their own CRELF proposal? Does that have any appeal? I'd be interested. A little bit? Okay. Uh, we, were, we were fortunate last year, and we got two... Um, Too funded. Let me just show, let me just show you what those are while we're while, while we're my rest of my computer's trying to wake up here. So one was um, one was Hanson's. And have you guys been in touch at all with um, Solar Plexus on this? Okay. Um, 
Do you guys, are you interested in like being part of this installation? You want me to Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna run it through Brian Kearns then. Uh, you know, he's he's um, our facilities renewable energy guy, and he put the thing out for bid. Uh, hired Solar Plexus. So right now, how about if I just give him everyone's name, and he can sort of put you in on the the loop for that. So this was this was one of our Krelf proposals. Um, I don't remember exactly what the due dates are, but I, I think it's coming up. So if if you um, uh, want to do, an, I I think Lomason is already sort of done bid funded everything. One thing I I might have you explore though is if you want to um, write your own, you might ask for more money to expand the array at the West Campus. Uh, right now it's just like a three or four kilowatt array, but the idea was to get it up to you know closer to 50 kilowatts, which is the current legal limit. So that would be one sort of relatively, I don't want to say easy, but straightforward uh, proposal would be to say, hey, um, we're going to work with the contractor. He's going to put in this size of an inverter so that the um, array can expand. And that way you sort of, you know, working with an existing project, don't have to reinvent the wheel. Because, you know, it's almost like we've got more, you know, more projects that we can handle in some sense. So let me get you in touch with uh, Kearns right now on Lomason. Machine is just it's just a dog right now. It's slow. You may heard from Brian Davis. Last time I spoke with him, he was withdrawing. Yeah, still, I, I, I feel really bad about that. He didn't really didn't really talk to me much. He just kind of left in a little a little huff. Good, good to have him back. Okay, so let me um, let me do this. Brian Kearns. I can never remember if I'm spelling Lomason. Two M's, two S's, right? Yeah. I think we're talking, um, well, that's like the human convention has everybody within a certain latitude range being on the same hour, but the um, time, well, you can debate whether time is discrete or continuous, but I think the problem is to treat it as a, as a continuous variable. Yeah. yeah. And then the actual, when the sun does its actual zenith, is a little different than when noon is or, or one during the day. So I think that's what it's at. So guys, that was one project. Um, here's the other one, and then we can get into the into the um, the course. So anyway, if you want to if you want to you know help out with some installation in Lomason, I just threw that out there. The other one is. 
so these were both written in 2015. They were both um, accepted. Uh, Carson's is the one at West Campus. Is West Campus like the main mountain campus? Okay, uh, no. Uh, th there's the mountain campus, which is under the M. Yeah, sometimes also called main campus. We are sitting on East Campus right now, and West Campus is at 3,500 um, South. That's right. Welding, diesel tech, industrial tech, yeah. And they've got a giant um, uh, giant roof. <laughs> Yeah, I think I've got a pretty good, um, pretty good image of it. So there's there, here's the roof right here. And uh, that's about what a 50 kilowatt array would look like. So, if you guys you know would would like to hop on that, it's already been partially funded. But if um, you want to reach out, and I'll, so I already CC'd everybody in the class uh, to Brian Kearns, who's our facilities renewable energy guy. I am now going to send something out to Eva Rocky, who is our um, sustainability coordinator within facilities and just so you'll have her email address too and if you want to um, hit that so let me just I'll send that email out right now as well is that also Krell funded or is that a different they're both Krell funded yeah and one got uh, Lomas and got a little bit more money than the um, West Campus one did so and also I mean another big part of this uh, it's just fundraising, you know. If, if um, I've got flyers, it'd just be a matter of putting this, you know, around main campus. There's always new students around. Some might be pretty passionate about renewable energy, and um, you know, interested in, in contributing. So, again, let me get everybody uh, copy uh, new. Eva I'm going to CC everybody um, uh, campus. So if you want to do that, like it's you know it's already you know partially been written, it's already up for bid. But the idea would be to work with the selected installer and say, you know, what's what's the optimal type of system to go in here? They're on three-phase power out there, so it's a, you know a little different in terms of the inverters that get used and how to how to string them together. And um, anyway, it'd be a good 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 project to get into. So that's Eva Rocky. So now let's dive into the course. Tell me, um, tell me what questions we had, and let's just go over them. Um, tell me where to. Well, Solar radiation exam. Uh, yeah. This one right here. Yep. Nice. So. You don't mind me bringing up um, your exam, do you? There. Is that okay? No. Okay. Complete by February six. Two hour time limit. Okay.
Looks like everybody scored pretty well. That's good, good scores. Hard to be perfect. All right, let's look at this guy. Okay, what is the clock time when the sun is highest in the sky in Missoula on July 15th? Hint, daylight savings time. Okay, so the correct answer is 1.41 p.m. And why is that? Zach, you were, you were um, starting with a little explanation. You want to you give it a shot? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, obviously, the daylight savings time was time is correct is one hour. So that's where you start. And then you need to determine where Missoula lies between meridians. Mm -hmm. If I remember right, it's like 13 degrees behind a meridian or two in front of another. Mm -hmm. It probably doesn't matter. Yeah. So for essentially for each degree between a local meridian, uh, you lose or gain four minutes. Mm -hmm. it, it's all in the book somewhere, so you know, finding the exact yeah. numbers is interesting. Yeah. And that's where you start. Okay. You know, Here's okay, that's that's a good that's a good start. I'm just gonna draw the planet like so. So this is the North Pole. This is um, so uh, Greenwich is over here, right? So Greenwich mean time. And let's just let's go out and, and look at um, actual longitude and latitude. So let's see what the longitude Greenwich. Okay, so Greenwich is in fact at zero. That's just where zero happens to be defined because that's where they were trying to figure out longitude in the first place. And um, you know, the tricky thing about longitude is you need a clock and the sky to figure out where you are with. Um, with latitude, all you need is um, you know the, the stars, and um, I guess time of year too. But um, you don't need a clock to figure that out. So Greenwich is at zero, um, right here, zero degrees. And let's just look up the uh, coordinates, uh, longitude in Montana. So 110 west, we can get a little more accurate than that, but let's go, um, uh, yeah, so here's, here's 90, kind of easy to chop it up this way, and obviously this direction is heading west, so I'm going to put um, Montana at... Uh, 110 degrees, and let's just let's just look up the longitude of Missoula, Montana. Uh, 114. Okay. So maybe um, maybe 110 is Helena. Yeah. Just throwing it out there. I don't know. Close enough. Okay. So here's, here's Montana at 110. Here is um, MSO at 114 degrees west. Now, um, let's go back to the question. And just let's just see if we can just answer the question kind of um, naively using geometry first and just see if it's right. Highest, so it's highest in the sky in Missoula on July 15th. So um, your first guess might just be noon. You're like, okay, so <laughs> and that that's the um, I mean that would be the um, well let's think about it here. Highest in the sky, but. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
and why, let's see, July 15th, what's, what's the significance of July 15th? It's not a, it's not a solstice or a, um, it's not a solstice or an equinox. I think the July 15th just uh, indicates where on the equation of time you should adjust those last X minutes. Mm -hmm. So that, that's kind of, I think, where I went last with the question, or you could start with that. Yeah. But, um, so did, what, what equation did you reference? It's, it's just called the equation of time, which is a hilarious name. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's somewhere in the chapter. And oh. it, it's essentially because of like the variations in rotation of the Earth. It's not totally uniform. Yeah, let's, let's start there then. Yeah. Let's start there. I was just going to take a, a blind stab at it, but since, since we've got an equation, you, let's just go with that. Equation of time, page 46. So are you using are you using the um, T lambda? T lambda yeah, yeah. T lambda equals um, lambda local minus lambda sub s times four. So yeah, the equation right above it. Okay. Yeah, and that, that like derives the number of minutes plus or minus from how many degrees off of the meridian yeah. Missoula is, you know? Yeah, let's take a look at that guy. All right. Okay, so let's just start there. So um, T, T sub lambda, which is the local time, equals... Uh, lambda local minus um, lambda s uh, times four. Yeah, so if we've got, um, so let's go back to this guy, 15 degrees. So there's, so we've got um, 360 degrees total. So if we do 360 divided by 24 equals, so there's your basically 15 degrees per hour. Um, so let's, let's, let's come out here. So we've got um, uh, 15, 30, 45, um, 75, 90. So there's basically six hours here. And then so 90 plus 15. Um, 90 plus 15 actually gets us to 115, doesn't it? Yeah. Right. And there's like so we're pretty uh, we're pretty close we're pretty close to dead on seven hours. It's just it's just basically um, you know, so I'll just draw 115 in. There's a little pencil here. One one five. Oh, I'm sorry. 105. 105. Yeah. Let me. Yeah. That doesn't seem quite right. Thanks. Yeah. 120. There we go. That seems a little more so. Yeah. It wasn't. Good. There's definitely like a convention. I think you always use the meridian west of where you are or east. Oh, yeah, so there's 105. Okay, thanks. So 120 gets us two hours. So let's just say 
Uh, for example, we were right, right on the 120. Um, should be right at right at eight hours difference, since we're not. Um, so lambda local. So am I just? I'm just going to go with um, 114 in there. Missoula, uh, one, one, four, minus, and on this guy, are we going with um, 105, since it's the next meridian east, yeah, <coughs> minus 105 uh, times four. Now, where's the four coming from? Well, since there's 60 minutes in an hour, but only 15 Earth degrees. That's that's the ratio. That's where the four is coming from. Uh, so let's let's just run with that. So one one four minus one o oh, five equals times. Uh, whoops. What did I say there? Nine. Oops. That's 36 minutes. That was not one of the answers. <laughs> so did, where'd you get the 41 from then? Then you, you take the equation of time for the date, which is July 15th. Oh, nice. OK. Yeah. And where's, where's that one? It's uh, page 46 at the bottom. So you can see in the middle of July, it's right about at minus 6 minutes. Oh, so did you just did you just pull it off the graph? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where that line hits the middle of July. Gotcha. About minus six, and you actually add a negative, the negative of the value for the equation of time. So it's actually you add six minutes to the thirty-six you got, mm -hmm. and that should give your your final uh, total time. Yeah, that is a tricky one. Yeah, lots of steps. <laughs> I had like ten tabs. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So here, so here, here we go. So the, um, so here's the answer, and and you know, I just kind of work, worked my way through this one too. But um, since we are not on one of the um, uh, the longitudes, it's that's an exact hour. You know, we're at one fourteen. That's going to push us um, thirty six minutes later, and that's just based on an annual average. And then the, the next figure to, to dial it in on a, um, on a daily basis, I'm just going to hold the book up. So while well, this, this shows. But right here at the bottom, I'm looking at July. And so yeah, like you said, just, just looking here, on July 15th, it's about negative six minutes and I'm looking at the example in the book yeah so the example in the book and this is on page um, 47 let me write that guy out too let me write that guy out too so this is uh, page 46 I apologize, there's no equation numbers here. This is page 46. And then page 47. The local standard time can be determined, be determined as such. So uh, T sub S, so this is what's called the um, local standard time of solar noon, equals uh, T naught minus TE plus uh, T lambda. And we already got T lambda equals 36 minutes. And then from here, 
Well, so C, so T not. I think we're going to start with 1 p.m. right because it's um, daylight savings. Yeah. I have to start with one. Is it? Uh, I even totally would have missed that too. The there, the handles in there. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so we'll just we'll just start with 1 p.m. minus T sub E, and T sub E is coming from the equation of time, and that's the figure that I just showed. So minus, and then it actually is in fact a negative six minutes, so minus um, zero, dink, dink, zero, six, uh, plus 36. So we're looking at 1 p.m., basically, you know, plus six minutes, plus 36 equals 1.42 p.m. Going back to the uh, exam, uh, 1.41 is the closest. Make sense? Yeah, it was kind of convoluted. Uh -huh. Kind of had to dig, dig for that one in the book. That's, uh, that's chapter two. And so in, in terms of in terms of um, a PV array design, um, it would be at that moment in time. It would be at 1:41 p.m. on July 25th when you would expect to see the highest uh, amount of wattage coming through your panels. And that, that's that's the whole point of doing it. Like when when you so. You know, you're looking at your watch. Hey, it's noon. Where, you know, where are all the photons? Well, just wait till 1:41. That's when it's. That's when it'll be maximum. So, good on that one. What's that? Good on that one. Yeah. Is it good? Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. We're referring to the map on page 48 of the textbook. What is the optimal tilt angle for a solar array in Missoula? Oh, yeah. Guys, um, where are you guys in, in which which graph are you? Are you? Sun paths for forty five degrees latitude. Yeah, I think Missoula lands are at about forty five. Yeah. Latitude. Yeah. So the, it says the correct answer is thirty five degrees. You must have to take some average of those three paths. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a quick break and figure that figure that guy out. 